Welcome to examsavi.com. We'll see the video for voting machine, electronic voting machine using microcontroller. And what are the topics to be discussed in this video on introduction of electronic voting machine and what are the voting system steps and what are the block diagram available for this coating machine. The hardware requirements we will see one by one each. Introduction. The main objective of coating is to allow the voters to receive their rights in order to express their choice regarding specific issues. So technology is being used more and more as a tool to assist voters for casting their votes. So for that, we need to have a common rights like a pieces of legislation and citizen initiatives, constitutional amendments, and choosing the government or a political representatives. So that is the main thing why we are going for voting. And what are the steps to be followed for voting? Here, like some steps are there like voter identification and authentication. So, voter identification is required during two phases of electoral process. The first one for voters registration in order to establish their rights to vote. And the second one is a voting time we can say to allow a citizen to exercise their rights to vote by verifying if the person satisfies all the requirements needed to vote. It's just like called as an authentication. And the further steps are like voting and recording of votes cast. Whatever the voters they are voting, that will be recorded. And finally, voting recounting. So once voting is over, that will be counted. And finally, the results of an election. So this is generally called as voting system steps. The block diagram for electronic voting machine is like microcontroller with PC interface, personal computer called as and keypad interface, some indicators called alarm and power supply unit in order to display. So LCD display is used to store the votes and memory is used control unit for this entire block so for voting we used once again a fingerprint module these are all the hardware requirements needed for electronic voting machine we'll see each block one by one so these are all the hardware components whatever we discussed right now in a block diagram like microcontroller we used here 8952 family of microcontroller and display unit called LCD liquid crystal display and PC personal computer power supply needed for that and keypad for voting fingerprint module to store this voting we used a memory called E square room. We we'll see everyone together. So the description for hardware components are like we'll see beginning like microcontroller. Microcontroller here we used Atmel family like AT at 89C52, which is an 8 bit microcontroller that comes under Atmel 8051 family. So, this is the chip for 8C5, 89C52 controller chip, and this can access like 8 KB of flash memory, erasable read only memory that is called as. Pro and 256 bytes of RAM. This microcontroller has 8 KB of Pro and 256 bytes of RAM. So this is the controller what we are using in electronic coating machine. The display we used here is liquid crystal display LCD. LCD is nothing but a flat panel display, and you can say it as electronic visual display. That uses generally a light modulating properties called liquid crystals. 
these liquid crystals will not emit any light directly like LEDs. So this is the interfacing of LCD with microcontroller. With these pins, like 14 pins of LCD, this is a 2 cross 16 LCD. How it is interfaced with microcontroller, it is shown in figure. In fingerprint module, in order to cast the oats, you need a fingerprint. So this is a sample image of fingerprint. If you fingerprint, the oats will be recorded internally. So keypad, how keypad is interfaced with microcontroller. And we'll see what's meant by keypad. Keypad is nothing but a set of buttons which will be arranged in a block. So that will contain usually like digits, symbols, or with a set of alphabetical letters. If these things are there, then we can say like keypad, like four cross, four matrix. Like example, like in mobile, keypad, mobile, and in laptop, keyboard, all those things will come under keypad. Contents mostly numbers. We can say mostly for numbers we can use for keypad. If you are using like that, then it will be called as numeric keypad. Even for voting also we need keypad for casting votes. In order to store the votes, we need a memory. Here the memory used is E Square Pro, which is electrically erasable, programmable, read-only memory. This is one of the non-volatile memory which we use like computers and some other electronic devices if you want to store a small amount of data when power is removed also when power is removed may, may be turned off but still you want to store some data it's a small amount of data then we can go for e square pro example like calibration tables or for any device configuration in that case you can go for e square pro if you want to store a large amount of data then you need to go for e pro as flash memory not an volatile non volatile memory as a flash memory in case of usb flash devices we need to store large amount of data so in that case it is better to go for flash memory based e square pro rather than going for traditional e square pro devices so this is what a memory device and power supply. Finally, we'll discuss what the power supply unit does in voting machine. We'll know without power, nothing is there for electronic device. Even for all, we need charging and discharging. So here the power supply unit mainly consists of a step-down transformer, rectifier unit, input filter, regulator, and output filter. So the main use of step-down transformer is it is used to step down the main supply voltage by using step down transform it consists of like primary and secondary coils and the output of secondary coil is a AC waveform so in order to convert into AC waveform to DC waveform by using rectifier so because of that we are going for rectifier unit if you want to convert AC voltage to DC voltage, then we need to use a rectifier. But the output voltage after rectifier, that will be in rippled form, not pure DC. So it will be called as rippled DC voltage. So in order to re remove the ripples in DC voltage, we are going for filter. So now it is input filter. In this input filter, capacitor can act as a filter. The main principle of capacitor is, we can say like charging and discharging. In case of positive off cycle, capacitor will be in charging state and in negative off cycle, capacitor will be in discharging state. So this allows only AC voltage and does not allow DC voltage. This filter is fixed before regulator. Before going for regulator unit, you need to fix this filter okay after the output of filter we have regulator regulator will regulate the output voltage constant depends upon the regulator what type you are using so it maintains the output voltage as constant and whatever the data is there that will be given to once again an output filter 
you are once again capacitor will act as a filter the principle of capacitor is we know it is a charging and discharging so here charging will take place at positive off cycle and discharging will take place at negative off cycle so this time in output filter it allows only DC voltage and not AC voltage so that is what the output of power supply unit and this is the working of electronic devices in case of voting machine to case their ports. And thank you for watching this video. For more, you can visit examsavik.com.